Hello everyone. So today we had a lovely session about time order. I hope you all remember it. And um, it was very, very exciting and it's very simple. And I'm going to go through the session really fast right now in case you want to remember anything of what happened before. So um, time, o time order, as you could see right here in front of you, it's a point of time as measured in hours and minutes. So it could be similar to anything like hour or the time when you say a clock, like five o'clock or six o'clock or anything that's related to time. Uh, some other examples are like past midnight or noon, when you're trying to explain a time in the day without saying the actual you know, time on the clock. So you say past midnight or past noon or before noon. Some other examples here is saying the time is 9.30 a.m. Even saying it specifically numerically um, as a time is also an example of a time order because you're trying to explain to someone the, the events of the day through um, telling them about the time. Um, other examples here, like you see in number one and number two written in red, uh, the first one is at 11 o'clock we got to the animal park. In this scenario you are explaining the event happening at what time during the day so the person reading or the person hearing you would understand that at 11 o'clock you were going to the animal park or you were there. Um, the second example they say after seeing the lions we had lunch at 1 o'clock. As you could see here there are two time, or time orders. The first one is after. It shows that there was an something that happened and then after it something else happened which shows an order of events and as long as it's showing that order of events it's considered a time order the second part of it is the last part which is at one o'clock which shows the time that they had lunch which is also considered a time order since it shows the time of the event and makes it easier for the reader or the listener to understand what happened first and what happened after so we're going to move on here. The time order is split up into different kind of subcategories, let's say. Um, first one would be the before category. So before here, um, it gives you examples uh, like earlier or in the past. These are words that kind of make you understand that something happened before, something happened earlier, something happened in the past. It's not something that's happening right now. So in, in events inside of a conversation or inside of a passage, for example, if you're reading, when you see the words earlier or in the past, you know that it was something that happened before and it ended and it's no longer there. Um, the second part here is when it's first, not when it's before. Examples of that is at first or to begin. This also helps the reader or the listener understand the fact that what's happening is going to happen right now. So at first, they're going to do this activity or this event, or to begin with, they're going to state these facts or this or that and so on. And it also explains that what is happening is happening first before anything else. Um, moving on to the last categories here, which are the three last categories, you see there is next. And next gives you an example are words like after or secondly or soon or soon after. These are things that are showing events that are going to happen right after something else. So if you have, you're going to go to the zoo, but after the zoo, you're going to go somewhere else. The word after here shows that there is an event that's going to happen after what you are doing right now or next to what you're doing right now. Um, the other subcategory here is sometimes. Sometimes just gives you a time order of things that don't usually happen, but they occasionally happen, but not always. So examples of words like this are at times, or gradually, or even like I just said, occasionally. These are words that give you an idea that the event that is happening right now isn't something that always happens but it's just something that sometimes happens. So if I say, at times, I go to the zoo. So it doesn't mean that you always go to the zoo or that you don't go at all. It just means that at times you do, when you have the time or maybe when you want to go. Last thing here are time order words that give the meaning of last. 
Examples of these are afterwards, or at last, or things like in conclusion. These are words that, towards the end, kind of sum up everything that is happening, or kind of give you the idea that the conversation or the passage that you're reading, like the comprehension that you're reading, is coming to an end. So they say, okay, at last, I went here, I went home, for example. So if I say, at last, I went home, you know that there's nothing else after that, because that was the last thing that I did in my day. So if you have any other questions, please come up to us at any time. Thank you.